Hey guys, welcome back to The Journey. My name is Jason Pizzino. Thanks again for joining me here on the channel. Let's get the channel to 50,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you find value from the video, leave us a like and a comment down below. Now, with that said, let's dive into today's video. We're looking at Ethereum. I want to get into some of the news. You know I am far more into the charts. It's been my history, 10 years trading, technical analysis, Wyckoff, GAN, everything in that sense. But I've always mentioned that I do read the news because I want to figure out where the market sentiment is. Now, I've got some older articles and the purpose for that is I want to see the dates and then how that has corresponded to the price action on the charts. And I'm sure you'll find something quite interesting about that. Briefly before we get into the news, these are the latest videos on the channel. Go and check them out after this one. Bitcoin, Ethereum, major players in my portfolio. That's why I talk about them so often in the charts and the news. But there are other cryptos in my portfolio, such as Polkadot. Now, if I don't throw the word Ethereum or ETH or something in there, it doesn't get picked up by the SEO. It doesn't get picked up in the search engines as much because most people are searching for Ethereum. Now, I'm trying to show other coins here that you go and do your own research on, which haven't popped off, which I believe have huge potential. Of course, it's not financial advice. It's just a starting point. Go and do more research. The reason being is I think it's important to check out projects before they are known by everyone else. So check it out after this. Just thought I would make a mention to that early on. And if you aren't seeing those videos come up because they're just not ranking as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and click all so that they come through on your subscriptions. YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content. You guys might know that by now, so make sure you do that. All right, let's have a look at the first piece. Quick look at the overall market caps. One trillion dollars overall, but we're concerned with Ethereum at this point. ERC20 projects at nearly 220 billion and DeFi is at 14 billion. It looks like DeFi is popping off more than uh, the rest of the cryptocurrency space today. Stable coins, they're up 5%. Why are they up 5%? Who knows? They shouldn't be fluctuating that much. But there's a, a lot in the stable coin space, especially on ERC-20s. Uh, emerging trends, decentralized exchanges, we know most of those are on Ethereum, so another 5 billion. They are probably included in DeFi as well. So there's a lot going on on Ethereum. Today, as we record, Ethereum's at $138 billion, $1,200 Ether. Let's leave that there and move on to some of the news. First piece I've got here is exchanges are running out of ETH with reserves plunging 27% in 48 hours. This is something that I talked about in the technical analysis videos on ETH, where I think the price is going to shoot up exponentially. However, I don't believe that's kind of the fair value of ETH. Now, I'm not hating on it. It's not FUD. You know by now on the channel that I'm not trying to throw hopium bullshit your way. It's just really trying to take a clearer view or at least my best interpretation of the market because that's how I'm playing it and start to play out some scenarios that may happen at the end of the bull market. And I, this just happens every time. People are going to miss it for what it is. Say there's only one ETH left and it has to go around to 10 or 100 different exchanges. How much would that one ETH be worth? Let me know in the comments down below. There is no right answer to it, but it's definitely going to be somewhere way up there. I was going to say huge, but $500,000 ETH, a million dollar ETH. This is just like a crazy scenario, right? So we're playing that out on maybe a larger scale. If the reserves plunge by 27%, then we have less ETH out there, even though there's a lot of ETH being held by people. So at what price would you sell your ETH if you see it spike crazily? If you don't want to sell it at all, cool, leave that comment down below. But say there's only one ETH left out there and you're like, sweet, I own one ETH. I can sell half an ETH, keep the other half. If this thing spikes because there's nothing left out there, at what price would you sell half your ETH knowing you can still keep half an ETH? At what price? So we're at $1,200 now. Would it have to get to 5000 10,000. You're only selling half. You're keeping the other half, right? Which price would that be? That's all I'm asking here because that's what I think may happen. And basically, that's the market, right? Supply, demand. There's going to come a point where the supply will meet the demand. So if the demand is at $10,000 an ETH this early on, I'm sure there'll be a ton of people who would just sell a hell of a lot and would 
push the price right back down. Maybe if it only spiked to 3,000, that might be the cap for some people and they would be out there happy to sell out their ETH knowing that they bought it at 100 or 200 dollars. There's over a 10x for them already. So that's what I'm getting at here. It doesn't have to be this $87,000 ETH or this $27,000 ETH. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It's just pretty much what the price majority of people are willing to sell their ETH at for and there's our supply and demand. Next up, Gnosis, which is an old cryptocurrency project, receives 2.3 billion in Ethereum in a day. Now the third largest ETH holder with 2.2% of supply. What does that all mean? I just see it as another Ethereum project now holding more ETH. What the hell are they doing with it? So the article goes on to explain what Gnosis is. Now they came out in 2017. I remember this ICO. It was crazy. I didn't get into it. Not saying I'm some genius here, but uh, 10 minutes they sold out a $12 million ICO. World record at the time. And then they started getting even crazier than that. It was like sold out within minutes, sold out within seconds. It was just stupid times. All right, so they came up as a prediction market and have since expanded into numerous corners of decentralized finance. So I assume they're holding it to do other means on their project. So that deposit came through on Thursday, one and a half million ETH worth over 1.7 billion. So it's just recently as well, which is probably adding on to that previous article where there's 27% less ETH on the exchanges now. So now this is going locked up in Gnosis. That's again, putting more pressure on the supply. Now we're getting into the articles because I want to look at the dates on this and then relate it back to the chart. So let's have a look. Crypto investor who calls Bitcoin bear market bottom loading up on several altcoins predicts imminent rally. Look at the date, January 9th. What happened on January 9th? We were coming to the absolute top of the market. On Bitcoin, the top was on the 8th. So let's have a quick look at that. There's the top, inside day on the 9th, dumped on the 10th. So there's a lot of good news articles coming out throughout crypto all the time. But it's funny that we get a lot of this stuff saying altcoins are they're going up again. Another massive rally. Bitcoin, another massive rally. 8th of January. Sky's the limit for Ethereum. What else we got? January 6th on the way up to that top. Billion dollar gambling titan patents way to fuel bets with Bitcoin. So we looked at that. Crypto assets created by DeFi powerhouse set to surge 10x. Buy, 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 buy. What day? Leading up to the absolute top. So if you're buying in here, then within a few days, you are shaken out of your position because from here to the low, you're down 17 to 20%, depending on which ones you picked up. But say 10 to 15%. For some people, that scares them out of their position. So keep an eye on the dates of the articles, the hopium, and then where we're sitting on the chart as well. And of course, when the low came in, we didn't have all of the best news out there. It was Bitcoin should be dead, 25% down, is this ever going to recover, and so on. So there's some news which is going to help us long term. And then the other day-to-day -day news, it's basically noise. It just affects how we're thinking about the market. This one I thought was interesting to see what other people are holding. Got a $272 million crypto trader reveals his entire portfolio. Here's what the high profile investor is holding. I'm listed under altcoins and Ethereum. Majority of the bag is Ethereum and Ethereum related tokens, which is why it's listed under here. You can find this on Twitter at 0x underscore B1. Basically, this is the list of coins and that's Ethereum, Ethereum, RenBTC, Ethereum, Aave, Ethereum. Correct me if I'm wrong with any of these, but basically ETH, Barnbridge, I'm pretty sure is on ETH. DeFi Pulse, Sushi Token, I mean, that's all ETH, plus he had some other ETH sitting here, <laughs> 229, 600 ETH, value 272, I mean, I'm, there's a lot of numbers here, nearly $300 million worth of Ethereum and uh, related tokens as well. Now, of course, we're going to have some institutional Ethereum news. Institutional rocket fuel could soon boost Ethereum, says macro investor Dan Tapiero. So let's get to the juicy parts of the article. Tapiero says it is possible that some of these institutions start to look at Ethereum and you have not heard anything about that as an allocation as well. I don't want to say it's a prediction, but if you ask me, like what could be a surprising thing that could happen that people aren't thinking about, that would be something that would be surprising. Essentially, institutions starting to look at Ethereum and adding more 
into their bags unless they already had some Ethereum, but I think that might spread as well. You know, we know that they're a bit more comfortable with Bitcoin. We've heard that news over and over again. Maybe they'll become more comfortable with Ethereum, and that's obviously set to skyrocket its price as well because, for one, the market caps are, are so different. So if you start adding in larger amounts into a lower market cap crypto, or even if it was a stock, the same effect is going to happen. It's going to bolster boost the price a hell of a lot more than what it would do if it was in a larger market cap like Bitcoin. He goes on to say, the fact that Northern Trust, very traditional custodian, has come out and said they're going to custody cryptocurrency. Now they have 13 trillion of assets in custody and then 1.3 trillion assets under management, AUM. So they're holding on to 13 trillion, but they only have 1.3 trillion, which they actually act actively manage. So what are they going to do there? Are they going to put into Bitcoin Ethereum? Are they going to get their clients to put some money into Bitcoin Ethereum? Maybe they can influence some of this 13 trillion of assets in custody to move across to cryptocurrency. It's, this is all speculation and I'm sure this is what a lot of influencers out there, they'll sort of just carry this on as far as they can and really just hype that up a hell of a lot. Imagine if just 1% of that 13 trillion came into Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's all speculation. Who knows if that's what they're going to do. Maybe they only use a small percentage of this, which is still pretty cool. Something to be looked at at a later date when we have more set in stone figures about it. A few more pieces of news. eToro warns customers to brace for suspension of crypto buy orders due to an unprecedented demand. So looks like there's a lot coming through for eToro, which is known to have a lot of newbies on there. So we're still getting retail going hard into crypto. Now, do eToro actually purchase the real underlying cryptocurrency or is it just a price mimicking product that people trade on there? I haven't been able to find where I can uh, clearly show that they are buying the real cryptocurrency. If you guys have that news or article where you can find that, let me know in the comments down below, that'd be handy. This one's really interesting, right? So as ETH price hits 825, it is an older article, 3rd of January, 93% of Ethereum dresses turn profitable. Now there is a metric in Glassnode where you can see the profitable wallets versus the Ethereum price. Now I'm going to find this and put it in a future video. Uh, basically, the theory is as the price rises, as it gets to a peak, uh, these wallets a few days earlier or a few weeks earlier, they get to that peak of them being in profit. So the majority of these wallets are in profit just before we get to the peak of the market. This is seen in Bitcoin above 75%. It's happened on, I think, every single last major peak. It's a pretty interesting metric which forewarns us about a potential top coming in. A lot of the indicators are lagging out there in technical analysis, you know, moving averages and RSIs and all this sort of thing. However, this metric here, looking at profitable addresses, at least in Bitcoin, uh, you can see the tops coming in advance. So let's keep an eye on that moving forward and I'll look for these charts which are through uh, glass node, so it's a paid subscription. It's about 30 bucks a year, so I'll get onto that for the next video. Last piece, one inch. We know it's a ERC20 token. More good news. Dex aggregator records significant trading volume post governance token launch. I thought I'd mention that. It's a, you know, it's Ethereum based, and we've been talking about one inch on the channel. So we'll, we'll do some future videos on these smaller tokens, but just dropping that there. Let's take a quick look at the chart before we wrap up. Ethereum has pushed up a little bit since yesterday's video. We are just closing slightly above all of our previous closes here over the last three days. That's a, a good sign. Hopefully we start to push up a little bit higher, but if we continue to accumulate at these levels of 3% to 3.2%, happy days. This is Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Maybe that means we're going to get another strong push up in the dollar value of Ethereum. If this can get a leg on, if, if, if Bitcoin continues to trade around the 30 to 40,000 range and then Ethereum can get its leg on and that would then 
move over into the alt season. That's what we've seen in the past as well. Now, Ethereum US dollar it's still holding its position up here. I definitely want to see a close above 12.30. We haven't seen that yet. Volume starting to drop on this last rally, which is leading me to believe that we may be topping out here. Got to wait and see. But like I've said all along, I would love to see this just pull back for another two, three weeks. Even a couple of months would be absolutely amazing because it's just another reload time. We need that pause in market price so we can reload and then take off again. I don't want to see this push straight up again from here. If it does, no problem. Let's just keep trading with the trend. No problem. We're just following with it, going through again. It's all good. I'll leave that one there. Thanks again for joining us. If you want to get on board with the course that's coming up this month, the first 100 guys that uh, subscribe and buy the course, you'll get a significant discount. Jump over to my website. Link is in the description. Leave your email address there and I'll let you know once it's released. It's about trading like I do here for long-term investing. There's no trade tip calls, so don't come across expecting trade tips and all that sort of jazz. This is for long-term stuff. I'm not in the game short-term. I'm in the game long-term. If you found some value from the video, you know what to do. Like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification icon. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.